Greetings, Mind Crafters, and welcome to another Minecraft episode on this beautiful day. My name is Kimberly Quinn, and I am so pumped today to talk about, uh, we teach people how to treat us all day, every day, even if we're not aware of it. In fact, most of the time we're not aware of it. So I actually brought my frame outside here because this is what we're going to talk about, frame work. So this is obviously a picture frame. So picture what's inside is your very, very authentic self. When we were brought into this world, all warm and squishy, we were in our, we were inside our little baby frames, loving ourselves and knowing that we were wanted and cherished until, you know, the world started to tell us stuff, whatever, whatever like that. And we started to get pulled out of our frames little by little. Maybe we go back in, get a little bit of that back and we come back out, that sort of thing. So inside is all of our, all of our authentic, where we just bask in delight and self-love. In other words, babies know they're loved, okay? They just know they're loved. And something happens and we just forget that. So we just spend all this time trying to get that back and questioning and self-doubt and all this stuff. So when we're outside the frame, we often uh, sort of find ourselves seeking external approval. We find ourselves people-pleasing. We find ourselves rescuing all so that we can get filled up by other people with that approval fix. And it feels like dope fix. When it also, it doesn't last, much like a, a drug fix, it doesn't last forever, right? Because that's because it's not authentic. We have the authentic self, and then the evil twin of the authentic self is the ego. We have the authentic self, evil twin of the authentic self is the ego. So all that need for approval and kudos and appreciation and things is not coming from any place authentic. Why? Because the authentic self doesn't need it. We are whole and complete and we don't need it. Now, it doesn't mean to say that we don't enjoy improve, enjoy approval because of course we do. I know when I do presentations or you know, I meet with parents and they say all these nice things about different things and students say nice things about things. You write a book, people say nice things. All that's great. But the difference is I don't go looking for it. If it comes in, you know, organically, naturally, this just feels so good. In fact, sometimes I even run the reel through my head just because it felt so good. Feel the good feels and then let it be. Difference from being outside of our frame because we need the approval of this one or that one or that one, that they like us, that they give us appreciation. Even if it's a boss, you can do a great job without needing their approval, right? So here's why it's not, it's not a good thing. It's very bad. is because when we move our needs down here, and we need the approval of this one and they need to say a nice thing to me and they need to tell me I'm okay and all this other stuff, is that means that our happiness is dependent on those boxes being checked versus checking our own boxes. Not a good place to be in, okay? So another thing is when we, when we uh, are seeking for external, you know, seeking external approval for however that looks like, you can say, oh, but it's my boss. Doesn't matter if it's your boss. You can you can respect your boss. You can try your hardest. You can be all in and not need their approval. You can enjoy it and not need it. Okay. The other thing is when we put somebody on a pedestal, not just celebrities, that's not good either, right? But when we put regular people on, on pedestals, anybody on a pedestal, also situations on a pedestal, here's the thing. Again, we teach people how to treat us all day long. So let's say you put so-and-so person at work or new friends group or whatever on a pedestal, when you treat somebody like a celebrity, they're gonna treat you like a fan. And you don't want that, okay? You don't want that because this is self-abandonment. This is saying that whatever so-and-so person thinks of me is more important than what I think of me. Whatever so-and-so person thinks of me is more important than what I think of me. That's self-abandonment. There isn't anything worse you can do to yourself than that betraying your own self okay so we don't want that okay so so then so here's another thing is we can we can also teach people on the positive end how to treat us by setting boundaries and people might go oh my god oh my no she doesn't know me this is so hard for me of course it, there's a spectrum like anything in life just anything cooking skiing you know you know sexuality gender whatever whatever playing the violin there's all a spectrum so maybe you're a great boundary center, boundary setter, and you're over here. Maybe you're somewhere in the middle, and maybe you're just getting started out. Okay, so know that about yourself, and that's and that's fine. So here's the deal with boundaries. Boundaries are nothing more than self care, and here's the deal: it's a plain hard truth. You cannot take care of a self you don't value, and so boundary setting starts with knowing your own worth. Okay, and again, you might say, "Oh my gosh, I'm, I don't." I'm just starting with that. I don't really, I don't feel enough a lot. I, I wrestle with this so much. Okay. All right. So that's okay. So that means you're starting out and give yourself, give yourself, 
you know, some self-love and kudos for that, that you're starting out. Maybe I don't feel as worthy as I'd like, but I'm on it now. I'm aware because you can't do what you don't know. Once we know, my good friend, Dr. Dave would say, once we, once we become aware, we become responsible, right? So now that you're aware, just get it. Okay, young grasshopper getting on this thing. I'm going to start learning to value myself. And you can start with little itty bitty baby steps by setting little itty bitty boundaries and following through. It's also important to realize if you maybe you set a couple of boundaries that to other, other people don't even notice as much because they're maybe to you they're huge, but to them they're this big. Give yourself, celebrate those. Celebrate the breadcrumbs along the way. This is very, very important because small steps lead to big success. We don't start, you know, a hiker, let's say, doesn't start with Everest, you know. You start with, uh, you know, so, the foothills of somewhere where they've got all kinds of different level trails and you start with maybe a half mile or a mile walk or maybe you just start, start with a walk in your neighborhood if you haven't really exercised much and then move to the woods and then like that. You don't start with, you know, gas mask training to climb, you know, an altitude that thins your blood. No, that's not how it works. So give yourself the compassion to kind of, um, the compassion to take yourself exactly where you are and work from there. And then, and then just sort of like evaluate it. How did it go? How did it go with that boundary? Okay, well, I did it. That's the main thing. What might I do next time? Because you want to get to a place where you can say, and then there, there are soft launches or boundaries. It doesn't have to be, no, you know, <laughs> maybe there are times for that, but it can really be, um, and if you're just starting, it's sometimes it's often to have kind of a middle. So you can say, you don't say no right away, but you might say, let me check my schedule and I'll get back to you. Who's going to say anything to that? That's just, that's just how it is. We all have schedules. Let me check my schedule and get back to you. This gives you time to go home and breathe or go for a walk and come up with something as to why you can do this, this, and that. And this pushes you over the edge. And you're going to say it better than that. But when by pushing the pause button, saying, let me check my schedule and I'll get back to you and smile and don't talk anymore. Let there be awkward silence instead of trying to fill it in. Because if you start to fill it in afterwards, that's further evidence that you're not valuing yourself. Because when you don't want to have an difficulty being awkward in the silence or you are awkward it's uncomfortable but just bite the bullet and do it that's yeah, really important so let me check my schedule and i'll get back to you it and that person will say okay fine thank you what else is anybody going to say so that that is it we teach people how to treat us and whether it's in a you know in a, in a good way because you're kind of rocking it you come in the room you're exuding authentic confidence not arrogance that's of the ego but actually authentic confidence yeah, those people just own the room. There's not an ounce of arrogance in those people. It's just authentic. They know they're loved. They know they're cherished. They know people are going to listen to them. That's it. Member spectrum thing. That's this person with the charisma. Whole middle, grasshoppers in training. And then here where um, people are maybe not treating you well. I'm not saying they're even treating you horribly. Maybe they're treating you horribly. But let's say it's just sort of um, treating you less, you know, much less than you were, than you deserve to be treated because that's because you're in doormat mode. And that's because you're not valuing yourself. So you're going to get here. All right. So we teach people how to treat us. So we remember, begin by remembering we are all born with a little baby frame. It's still there. The frame never goes away. It just kind of your authentic self never, ever goes away. Your authentic self just sort of moves over from being in the driver's seat, unfortunately, to the passenger seat. Maybe she's even in the back seat or he's in the back seat. Maybe they're in the trunk. But your authentic self never, ever disappears forever. They're just waiting to be reinvited out of the trunk, out of the back seat, out of the passenger seat, to slide back over in the driver's seat where you find your power place. And that's what we're talking about. We teach people how to treat us. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from the gorgeous Northern Vermont. Have a mindful day.